What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today we are talking all about the brand new 2021 Ford F-150 Raptor. So as you can see, I've got the keys to this particular Raptor, but we also happen to have uh, a little blast from the past right next to us. That way we can kind of compare and contrast the very first year model of the second generation and the very first year model for the third generation Raptor. So what I'm gonna do in this video is kind of show you a full tour of the vehicle, show you the things that have changed and a lot of other things. But before we get started, I do wanna let you know that Town & Country TV is giving away a brand new 2021 Ford Bronco. And we're going to launch that giveaway the day that we hit 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. So go ahead and stop what you're doing, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification while you're at it, because we will launch that giveaway the day we hit 300,000 subscribers. And it's a little, uh, an opportunity to give back to you guys. So now without further ado, <laughs> we will go ahead and jump back into the video itself. Now, the first thing you want to realize is that the Gen 3 Raptor is completely different in every way compared to the Gen 2. Every piece of sheet metal is completely different. The underpinnings is completely different. Although they kind of look the same a little bit, they've still got, you know, a similar architecture or similar looks. Every piece of sheet metal, just about every piece of sheet metal is completely different. All right, so the first thing that I want to talk about is going to be the aesthetics on the front end. So the first thing you'll notice is you have these amber lights are back for the Raptor, but notice they're elongated versus the last generation. They are kind of, they're not nearly as elongated. They're more of like a round circle, not exactly round, but it is a good bit different compared to the Gen 2. So that's gonna be one thing. You'll also notice that this LED headlamp is is absolutely beautiful. Now you do have a different version of LEDs, but I think that this is definitely a step up and a step in the right direction. The Ford emblem is going to be absolutely what Ford is all about when it comes to the Raptor. That is the first thing that they show off is that Ford grill. And I will tell you that in person, uh, it looks a lot better than it does in, in photos and in videos and stuff like that. Anyways, you've got a new front bumper, you've got a new lower piece, and then back for another rendition is going to be the bash plate or skid plate underneath the front end of the Raptor. Now, while we're down here, let's talk a little bit about the suspension system itself. So as you can see, the Fox suspension system is definitely back. The active, uh, the live valve active technology is back as well. The front end suspension is a little bit different, but primarily it's a carryover. The rear suspension is really where Ford got wild as far as that's concerned. So uh, we'll talk about that here in just a second. But while we're down here, I want to notice and point out to you, this is an 801A equipment group, which means that it comes with the highest trim level or the highest version of the Raptor you can get. Um, and as you can see, it's got the rigid LED fog lights uh, down here as well. I do believe these are actually DOT approved. So, and it's cool. They come with a little uh, handy cover to go on there as well. So uh, pretty neat stuff. Oh, I did not notice this. Look at that little Easter egg. You got Raptor stamped into the inside of the headlamp. How freaking sweet is that? That's pretty cool. And then you'll also notice you've also got the side markers are also much wider as well. Now, a fun fact about these little amber lights, uh, they are not there for looks. They are actually there because the Raptor needs them legally speaking. So you'll notice that an F-150, a normal F-150, is the exact length it needs to be, or exact width rather, it needs to be before it requires extra lighting to uh, warn people that it is too wide for the road. The Raptor includes this, not because it wants to, but because it has to, and I think that's pretty sweet. Now, let's uh, take a look at the side of the vehicle as well. Uh, uh, you know what? I mean, there's just so much to cover. I'm just going to start pointing out stuff that I think is absolutely so cool. So, a different version of the hood as well. So, I'm going to move over here so that way I can show you this, but this is a functional heat extractor um, that allows air out of the engine compartment on the V6 motor. You heard me right, the V6, this has still got a V6, but don't worry, the Raptor R is coming and uh, word on the street is uh, it's going to be fantastic. But notice how this styling looks compared to the previous generation. Once again, also a functional heat extractor. So once again, everything is the same, but different, if that makes sense. It's kind of just a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
Well, that's exactly what they did with the exception of the motor. They needed to fix that. But the Raptor R is coming. We're <laughs> the Raptor R is coming. So these side vents are also functional. They allow heat to come out of the engine bay through these actual front fenders. Now, the fun part about this is Ford Motor Company is saying that they have uh, taken a lot of the design cues out of the Raptor fighter plane. And although I don't see it, I think it's pretty cool that that's where they took a lot of that design from. You can see you've got the door it, basically, the cab from here to about here is almost identical between a 2021 F-150 and a 2021 Raptor. They're almost the exact same. What you're getting is the wider body fender flares in the front, and then you've also got the wider hips in the rear. You'll notice that this little archway is back to allow for the increased width on the Raptor itself. Now, the other thing I want to show you is, since we're back here, let's talk about the wheel and the tire combination. So this particular tire is a 31570R17. It turns out to be roughly a 35 inch tire. And as you can see, it's a 17 inch Ford wheel. You do have a couple of different options for wheels. This is the base version of the wheel. Um, the customer that bought this vehicle is planning on doing some custom wheels and tires. Uh, so that's the reason we didn't opt for those. Uh, but it is neat to see that you do have 35s are back and 37s are also optional on the 37 inch performance package, which this one is not equipped with. If you go that direction, you automatically get some blue seats. So that's, that's kind of interesting as well. The rear suspension on the Raptor is really where Ford has dove in deep with the research and development. First thing you'll notice is it is still a solid rear axle. So that is nice to see that that is still here. You still have your live valve suspension system, which can automatically adjust based on what you're doing with the vehicle. And as you can see there, it is coil sprung for the first time in a Ford F-150. And so that's pretty sweet to see as well. Now, the idea behind this is all of those braces in the coil sprung is going to be better for a high speed off road situation. Now, it's nice to know that the Raptor is the only F-150 that currently offers the rear coil sprung suspension. And the reason I like that is because I've had an opportunity to test drive a coil sprung solid rear axle for towing situations, and I've done it right back to back with a solid rear axle with a uh, with a leaf spring setup and i feel like the leaf spring setup is a little bit more stable a little bit more um, better for towing applications but i feel like the coil sprung is better for on-road and off-road use so it's nice to see that ford's given us a couple of different situations based on what we're going on now the next thing i want to talk about is the exhaust system the reason i'm doing it from here is because i can actually see the muffler from where i'm standing and that muffler is really where they dove in deep with a lot of research and development that is an active valve exhaust system that allows you to custom tune exactly what you want your exhaust pipes to sound like. And speaking of pipes, let's take a look at the pipes. They're going to be very comparable to the previous generation Raptor, so it looks the exact same. You thankfully still have your powder coated black tips. Um, and once again, there's a lot of things going on with the exhaust system, like they've got this trombone loop system that is designed to keep the exhaust link the exact same all the way through and through. There's a lot of fancy technology, but really what you want to know is what does this thing sound like? And for comparison purposes, let's listen to what the Gen 2 2017 Raptor sounds like. And as you can hear, it's a pretty good difference there. And the biggest thing is the Gen 3 gives you the ability to customize it as you're driving down the road. Taking a look at the rear of this particular Raptor, you will see that we've got a nice applique, which is back for the 2021 model. Now keep in mind that in the previous version, you had an option to delete the applique, and this one actually featured that delete. So most of the Raptors you'll see will have this applique on there. Uh, that's one of the most iconic things, very similar to having the Ford logo in the grill itself. But thankfully we do have a power tailgate now with the actual Raptor. Now I will tell you, I think this one is actually in transport mode. So that's the reason it's not dropping down, but you do have a power release with this button. And then you also have the ability to go back up with it because it is a powered tailgate. Now, just like all the other F-150s, you still have your entire work surface here. You can measure stuff off, cut it off if you want to. You can put your phone or your tablet in this little holder right here. You got a place for your drink and you also happen to have 
your tailgate step, which makes it easier to get in and out of the bed of the vehicle. In addition, back for uh, popular demand for the 2021, you also have your Pro Power on board. So as you can see, you have your two normal household outlet plugs, uh, which is actually good for two kilowatts of continuous power right here out of the Raptor. In addition to that, you also have your LED box lighting system, which looks fantastic and not featured yet, but will get done. We're actually going to spray the bed liner on this particular vehicle as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the inside of the cab. All right, so for the inside of the vehicle, it's completely different, just like the other 2021 F-150s on the road. Now, for comparison purposes, I'm six foot three, so you can see how tall I am compared to uh, the cab of the vehicle when I'm standing next to it. And we'll go ahead and jump inside so you can kind of see what's going on here. So I'm going to hop in since it's push button start. I'm going to go ahead and hit engine start, and it automatically starts up the vehicle. First thing you're going to notice, massive 12 inch touchscreen located right here. You also have a massive LCD screen located right here in the instrument cluster. I absolutely love this because you can actually change everything as you're sli sw swifting through, or I don't even know what swifting through, as you're changing through your drive modes. So very similar to how the Bronco has goat modes, this one has drive modes, which allows you to go from things from like rock crawl, uh, Baja mode, you have uh, deep snow and sand, you have normal mode, sport mode, tow haul mode and then also the slippery mode so that's kind of nice because it gives you the ability to go into 4a which is the all-wheel drive setup that's exactly right so the raptor comes not with just a two high and four high and four low it also comes with an all-wheel drive mode which is designed for driving in slippery or nasty conditions on road which is pretty cool you also have the ability to lock your rear differential just by simply pressing the button over here and you also have dual climate control so if i'm really hot which i am because uh, that temperature is a lie. It is a lot hotter than 79 degrees right now, but I can set my temperature where I'm comfortable. And so that way you guys don't get any wind noise. I'm going to turn that uh, around. But if the passenger is cold, they can set theirs at 78. I can have mine at 62. Everybody is happy. You have air conditioned or ventilated seats as well as heated seats. And uh, I just like that they've redesigned this uh, speed for the actual fan. So in the previous generation Raptor, you had to press left and press right to adjust the fan speed. And I thought that was kind of clunky. I like the way that they have uh, made this all symmetry. You know, it, it's making my OCD happy, but the, vol or the fan speed up and down is the design that that should have been that way from the beginning of time. So pretty cool stuff there. In addition to that, we have a normal household outlet plug located up front, as well as a 12 volt outlet located right here. Looking at the dashboard itself, you've got a couple things. You've got your normal uh, glove compartment, which is just like a normal F-150. Now you'll notice this little texture piece up here is really cool. I love the way that looks. I don't really, I've not seen anything else out there like it but it really contrasts with this uh, little metal or satin brushed aluminum, whatever this is located there. It looks fantastic. And as you can see, it continues on with this C shape, which carries on throughout the entire theme of the vehicle. Now, one of the coolest party tricks is the secondary glove box located right underneath that cool texture that we just got through talking about. It's pretty cool stuff there. Now, the other thing I wanna point out to you is the orange accent right there by the air conditioner vent. That's located in a couple of spots inside of the new Raptor. And I've had a couple people ask me, why, why is that? Is that like a Raptor signature? I guess you could probably call it that. Uh, but I've also had other people ask about the steering wheel. Okay, what in the world is this for? What, why is this a different color than the rest of the entire steering wheel? The idea there is if you're off-roading in a high-speed situation, which is what the Raptor's made for, let's say you grab the steering wheel and you didn't have this there. Let's say you grab the steering wheel and you grab it quickly and you're, you're paying attention to 100 miles an hour through the desert. You're not paying attention to the steering wheel. If you grab the, the steering wheel in the wrong orientation, it could cause you to, to have a bad day. So what's nice about this is you know exactly which way is straight based on this little orange stripe inside of the steering wheel. That is a feature that is carried over from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2, and now it's back for the Gen 3 Raptor. So pretty cool stuff there. And also one of my favorites, you have your, uh, your paddle shifters. Now the paddle shifters are nice. Uh, obviously I'm comparing apples and, and oranges, but they're not as nice as the paddle shifters in the Ford GT that we have, but still one of the best, if not the best paddle shifters you will find in a pickup truck. So, so pretty cool stuff there. I do like the fact that it is, it is metal. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear that, but it is a metal paddle shifter. Uh, it does 
feel semi-responsive. I don't, I don't have any issues there, but once again, I think uh, I'm comparing apples and oranges. I've seen some better paddle shifters, but this is probably the best you're gonna find out of a pickup truck. A couple of technologies that I wanna show to you. Uh, a couple of things actually. You've got your 360 degree camera, which is back. Now Josh has got his door open. That's the reason it's kind of jacked up on the other side. He's going to see if he can shut that door. And yeah, there you go. So you've got a nice bird's eye view of exactly what's going on on the outside of the vehicle. Now you also have a front camera since the vehicle's in park. If I drop the vehicle into reverse, notice how it shifts to the back camera for this particular mode. Now the other thing is, is you can actually change the cameras located up here. So you can look at just the rear view camera. You can look at a 180 degree view of the rear camera. You can look at, yes, the bed of the truck. Why? I don't, don't exactly know, but you can do that. And I've also heard a rumor that you can actually look at this while you're driving down the road. I'd like to test that and see if that's actually true, but um, if it is, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, so this is going to be for the trailer camera. So you can actually purchase a trailer camera to mount to the back of the trailer, and this is where that camera would show up. Uh, you also happen to have a top-down look straight at if we had a hitch mounted up into the, the vehicle, you could see what the hitch is doing. So pretty cool stuff there. And then also you can actually see as you're backing up, um, you, know, at, you can actually see what the trailer is doing as I'm backing up. And if you want to see a little bit more on this side, you can do that or you can see a little bit more on this side. Now these particular cameras are utilizing the cameras out of the side rear view mirror. So pretty cool stuff there. A lot of technology that Ford's packed into this particular Raptor. Now the other thing that I wanna show you is you have an auto park brake built into the Raptor. What in the world is that? So if you are backing up and you don't see it and little Johnny has got his, his, his bike behind you, it will automatically apply the brakes for you so you don't hit that that object or hopefully that kid uh, that is in that particular parking lot. So that is a pretty sweet setup as well. Now I want to show you this feature right here, which I'm not going to be able to demonstrate it because I don't have a trailer hooked up, but it has Pro Trailer Backup Assist. This is a feature that actually came out in 2016 model F-150s, and it allows the vehicle to drive itself in reverse while you have a trailer hooked up. So the idea there is a lot of people have a hard time understanding whether you like it or not. You can put it in, in spam the comments. If you want to, a real man knows how to back up a trailer, you'd be shocked at the people that I've met that don't know how to back up a trailer that are trying to do it. Um, but a lot of people don't understand that you've got to turn the steering wheel the opposite way that you want the trailer to go. Some people, it's just hard to register. So Ford's solution to that is you hook up the trailer, you set this thing up, given with the, the yaw sensor, which is located right here, you mount this yaw sensor to the trailer itself, and it automatically knows what the trailer is and what it's doing, and once it's set up, it's really, really nice. So the idea there is if you are backing up and you want the trailer to go to the right, you just turn the knob to the right. If you want it to go further to the right, you turn it all the way to the right. And then if you want the trailer to go to the left, you turn it left. Now the beautiful thing about this system is it is nearly jackknife proof. It is very difficult to jackknife your trailer if you're using this Pro Trailer Backup Assist. It's a very, very sweet setup. Now I want to show you a couple of other technologies and some things that have been carried over into this new generation of the Raptor, and that is going to be Bangin' Olufsen Premium Audio System. So you can see you've got a speaker located up here, you've got a speaker located here, you've got a speaker located here, which actually brings me to my next point. This one does not have the sunroof, which is it's pretty cool. The customer ordered this vehicle, and yes, it is already sold. All of our 21 Raptors are already sold, before you guys ask. Um, we pre-sold every one of them, but it is nice that you've got speakers here. You've even got a speaker in the headrest itself, so you can actually pump more and more audio into your head. I think it's up to 18 speakers on this particular setup, so pretty sweet, pretty sweet deal there. Um, it's not really technology. Well, I guess it is, but back for uh, out, you know, just like the normal 2021 F-150, you do have a wireless phone charger. So you set your phone there, and notice it automatically picks up and starts charging. That's really nice because you've also got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto located right here. If you wanted a, an easier spot to get to your phone, there's a nice little tray holder right there so you can kind of prop it up and see what's going on with your phone at any point in time. You also have USB-C and USB-A ports located here as well. Um, now, the other thing that I really like about the 21 F-150 is the interior work surface. So as I hit that button, the center console shifter folds down and you have this piece. Now I have the ability to eat my lunch or work on my computer, which 
as a reminder, you've got a household outlet plug here, really convenient. So you can do your work out of the F-150. And then when you get done doing your work and you need to file it away, you have a complete hanging file folder system located in the center console of this F-150. And the cool part is, is you can lock it with the key located right here. So if you don't want people to access your, your files, you can do that. And you can also store a lot of other stuff in there as well. But Ford's done a really, really good job as far as the interior plushness on this vehicle. So let's take a look at the back seat. But before we do that, there's a few more things that I want to show you. It's like every time I think I've covered most of the technology that's new, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot Ford did that too. And let's take a look at this button right here. This is going to be your trail pedal one drive. What that does when you turn that on, that works as a method so that way it applies the brake and it applies the gas in the motion that you need to do. So if you're off-roading and you're nervous about applying the brake and the gas, you literally, just like how Tesla has a one pedal drive, it is that very similar thing, but it is tuned and specified for off-road situations. The next thing I want to show you is the steering wheel itself. So we've already talked about this piece up here. I want to talk about this beautiful Raptor logo. And notice how the steering wheel is significantly thicker than a normal Ford F-150. Uh, but I want to talk about these buttons over here. So over here, you've got your cruise control where you can turn it on and off. It is an adaptive cruise control. So you have the ability to set the speed and the distance in front of you. And you also have lane centering set up in this version as well, volume controls as well as your voice activation controls. The menu button operates the menu for the instrument cluster. You have the back and then up and down, but really what I want to talk about are going to be these three buttons located on the right hand side. So you tap that top button and it actually adjusts the steering input and, uh, and how it feels actually. So you can change it from normal to comfort to sport mode and new for 2021. You can even put it in the Baja off-road mode, but since we are not in that specific drive mode, it's not letting us at this time. The next button is going to be for your suspension system. So you can adjust the dampers to a normal mode for a great on-road experience, or you can go into sport mode, which is going to, you know, tighten it up a little bit more. And then you've also got your off-road mode, which is going to be great for that high-speed off-roading. Now, the last one is going to be the exhaust mode. This is how you change the exhaust note, as you heard a little bit earlier. And the notes that you heard was in Baja mode right here, which as you see, it is for off-road use only. And then we put it in quiet mode. That's going to be the two ones that you have the biggest difference in the way that thing sounds. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the rear seat. Um, but before we show you that, I keep teasing you guys, but notice the vehicle is in drive. Okay. I'm going to open the door. That's a cool party trick. So just in case you get out of the truck, you're in a hurry and you forgot to put it in park, don't worry, the Ford F-150 has got you and it'll put it in park for you. All right, so for the rear of the F-150, the cab space is gonna be identical to a normal F-150. You do have your cup holders located right here, two of them there, two cup holders here, plus another juice box holder, and you've got cup holders in the doors as well. Plenty of leg room, that's not gonna be an issue. Now, one thing I do like about the Raptor seats, and I didn't mention it in the front, but I like how it is leather and it's perforated leather, but it's also got these bolsters or these side pieces that are designed to keep you from sliding out of your seat if you're doing that high-speed off-roading we've been talking about this whole time. Now, the other thing I wanna point out to you is notice how this vehicle does not have the airbag seat belt like they used to. I think Ford got rid of this option completely, so that's interesting to see that they did that. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but they did. Now, the other thing I wanna point out to you is in here you've got air conditioning vents for the rear occupants you also have heated seats now one thing i would have loved to have seen on the raptor is going to be ventilated seats in the rear because the ram trx does have that as you saw from one of our previous videos in addition to that you have a usb-c usb-a and then you also have another normal household outlet plug located in the back seat as well now onto my favorite part of the back seat and that's going to be how easy it is to make a lot more room so literally with just one hand and just lift it up, you've got a lot more space. Um, you've got a tag bracket for those states that require you to have a tag in the front of the vehicle. And then you also have a box link setup. So this is going to be the hooks that, that tie down in the bed of the vehicle. So that way you can tie stuff down and they lock in place. It's a really, really cool setup, but uh, that is for another video. What I want to show you back here is something that Ford has just picked up for the 2021 model on the F-150, and that is going to be this little setup right here. To the normal eye, it could probably look like it's just a continuation or just a piece of plastic, but to the trained eye, 
you lift this piece up, lock it in place. Yeah, you can put your stuff there, big whoop, big whoop. Why in the world would I want to do that? Well, let's say I wanted to put a long gun, a rifle, or something of value, anything of value back here. I could put that. You can drop that other seat down completely. You can lock both of those seats in the down position. And although it's not a safe and it's not designed to be a safe, it is a great way to secure some of your belongings. So I think that's a really, really good piece of engineering in my personal and professional opinion. The other cool part is you have the ability to, uh, to separate this different spots. So you've got that little divider there and yeah, it, it really, really is a nice setup that I think Ford hit a home run with this. And the cool part is you can put it up and put it down from one side and it's that easy to give yourself that much more room. So Ford hit a home run bringing this into the F-150. All right, let's talk about the most controversial thing on this Raptor and that <laughs> is going to be the motor. Can you tell I, I took the keys out of the vehicle? So that is uh, that honk, that double honk that you heard. That if you're new to Ford, what that is, is it's saying, hey dummy, you left the car running and you got out with the keys. You might either need to cut it off or just want to warn you that, you know, once again, it's warning me, but if I take the key and put it in the vehicle and shut the door, it doesn't do it anymore. So it's just a little bit of an extra warning. But back to the most controversial thing on the new Raptor, uh, and that is going to be this particular motor. So this is going to be basically the exact same motor coming over from the Gen 2 Raptor into the Gen 3. This is a 3.5 EcoBoost. It's a high output version. I believe the horsepower is 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. I believe that remains un changed but why in the world is this controversial ram trx i don't think ford knew that ford was, that ram was coming out with the 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 nasty big v8 supercharged that the ram TRX. i don't think ford realized that and you got to remember it takes many many years to design and develop and engineer a product like this now the good news is ford has promised us that a raptor r variant is coming out very very soon I, I believe maybe 2022. I don't have any insider information, uh, but that's my guess. And once again, I, I don't know what motor is gonna be in it, but if I had to guess, um, I would say a similar version of the motor of the 5.2 supercharged motor out of the GT500. I think that is really the perfect motor to put in this truck for a couple reasons. One, that's the first thing that, that's what Ram did is they took their Hellcat motor and popped it in the truck. Why can't Ford put their GT500 motor and put it in the truck and just tune it for you know this specific application? But I will tell you, after owning a couple of these 3.5 EcoBoost high outputs over the years, and most specifically my 17 model that I had for over a year, this is a fantastic motor. Now, the supercharged V8 will be even more fantastic, but as far as reliability, I didn't have any cam phaser issues. I know a lot of people did. Hopefully, this version's got a couple of things tweaked underneath the hood that will uh, increase the, the, um, the reliability of this particular motor. Time will tell on that, but I'd be willing to bet that you're not gonna have very many issues out of this. Now that leaves us with the last thing that we need to talk about, and that is going to be the price. So as you take a look at this particular window sticker over here, I'm gonna kinda show you what we've got going on. So obviously this is a 2021 Raptor. This one doesn't have every option under the sun, but it does have the 801A, which is the higher equipment group. It also has the power tech package and it also has the auto start stop removal, uh, which it looks like they're charging you for that. I thought that was a credit they were giving it back. But anyways, 73,935 is the MSRP. Um, so, so there you go. That's what you're looking at as far as the MSRP. Now, if you want to compare that to the MSRP of the other truck that we have over there, that one, when it was new, stickered for 68,075. So it's interesting to know that it really only increased in price by just a couple of grand. So that's nice to see. Now, the other thing is, is you also have to compare, and I know we didn't do much of a walk around on that one, but you can buy that one in pre-owned trim, just like it is. I think we've got that one listed for 58, 58, nine, something like that. So the question is, is 58, nine versus 74. Once again, we're sold out, but which one would you rather have for the money? I mean, I know I like the cool and the te technology and all that kind of stuff, but that's, it's very, very interesting to note. And I also forgot to mention that one has 66,000 miles. This one is brand new with zero miles on it. So pretty cool stuff there. Yeah, guys, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Before you go anywhere though, I wanna remind you, we are giving away a Bronco and we're launching that giveaway the day that we hit 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button with that bell notification turned on so that way you don't miss any fun content that we got coming. We are literally pouring a lot more effort into this channel 
just as a way to say thank you guys and we're just very appreciative that you guys actually even want to hear what we have to say so we are super pumped to have you and we can't wait to uh wait can't wait to do this for quite some time we're really excited guys thank you so much for watching this video leave some comments down below if you have any questions smack that like button if that's what you're into and if you haven't already done so subscribe to the channel with that bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video peace